Be inspired with the special message from Bishop Macedo. May God bless all of you, your family members, your loved ones, your neighbors, everyone who is part of your circle of friends, and, and so on. May each of you be the blessing itself wherever you go. This is God's will. Did you know that? God does not want to give you the crumbs. I apologize, but God doesn't want to do insignificant things in your life. Not at all. He wants you to be filled, filled with the Holy Spirit, so that then you may overflow with the Holy Spirit, so that people who do not know the Lord Jesus may get to know Him through each and every one of us. Not only by word, because to speak about Jesus is easy. Everybody speaks about Him. God wants that His image may be reflected in each and every one of us in a way that people may see that He is a living God, that He is the same. Since the beginning of our creation, since the beginning, He has been the same. What He was in the past, He is in the present, and He will be in the future, forever. He is eternal. So, due to this, He wants to be materialized in His children. And that's why He gives us the fruit of the Holy Spirit, as well as the gifts of the Holy Spirit. So you can see how great God's project for each of us is, for you, dear friends, in order for you to be an instrument of His in your workplace, especially in your home, firstly in your own home, in your marriage, in your marital life, in your family life. He wants you to to bring His image and reflect His image, the image that was lost there in the Garden of Eden when Adam and Eve sinned. He restores this image by turning us into new creations, into a new creation. He cannot just make us second-hand as people usually do with old cars, isn't it? They, they try to fix it here, put a new piece here or there, but it's still an old car. He doesn't do that. He wants to give you a new identity. And that's why the Bible says that the Holy Spirit, the Spirit Himself, bears witness which means He confirms, He shows us, He shows us, He seals us, and gives us the assurance within our spirit that we are children of God. Because, pay attention, the text says, the Spirit Himself bears witness with our spirit 
that we are children of God. That's when a person is born of the water and of the Holy Spirit, as the Lord Jesus said. So, when a person is born of the water and of the Holy Spirit, indeed, they are children of God. They can say, I am a child of God. They can pray saying, Our Father in Heaven, because the child that is speaking to the Father, so they have this right to do so. They enter the presence of the Father any time of the day or the night or any situation, any time. Wherever they are, they have the right to speak to the Father because she is a daughter, he is a son. And every one of God's children, all of them with no exception, receive firstly the fruit of the Holy Spirit, which is love. Love, peace, joy, goodness, etc., etc., etc. So, firstly comes the fruit of the Spirit. And then, either at the same time or afterwards, the gifts, depending on the circumstances or the necessity, but the fruit of the Holy Spirit comes immediately. When you are born of God, you automatically receive the character of God. You are born of God, then you carry with you God's DNA immediately because it's the divine nature in you. All those who are children of God have God's DNA they have the fruit of the Spirit because they have the character of the Father. The children, the children, any child has the DNA of the Father or of the parents. So, the fruit of the Holy Spirit is the DNA of the eternal Father in us. And this is confirmed in each one of God's children, amongst His children, it's what is written here. The Spirit Himself bears witness. He confirms within our spirit that we are children of God. Then there is no doubt. So, when a person has God's DNA, when they are born of God, when they are born of the water and of the Holy Spirit, they are spirit, they are spiritual. And then, yes, they have naturally the fruit of the Spirit. The gifts, the gifts come according to the necessity that the child of God or wherever the child of God goes, so, if a child of God is in prison, for example, then they can pray for those who are sick, and those who are sick will be healed. They can deliver people from demons. They can speak of Jesus, which is to prophesy. They can do... They speak in tongues. They can speak in tongues, but they don't speak in tongues to ostentate as though it was a jewelry hanging on their neck or in their arms. No. No, the strange tongues is not to, uh, for us to show others, oh, I have the Holy Spirit, blah, 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 blah. No. Unfortunately, this is the ignorant ideology that is, is around all over the world. People seek more the gift of tongues than the Holy Spirit Himself. That's the reality. People are more concerned about speaking in tongues than in exuding or reflecting the image of God. And that's why the devil deceives them. The devil deceives these people. 
because they are extremely vain and they are not delivered. They are not children of God because when a person is born of God, they are divine. They are a child. They have the right to speak to the Father, oh my Father, in the name of the Lord Jesus. They can speak to the Father and have access at any time of the day or night and freedom to be with the Father because that's what the Father wants. However, if the person does not have this filiation, they haven't been born of the water or of the Holy Spirit, they are still flesh, then any gift they have is from the devil. Prophecy, speak in strange tongues, interpreting the tongues and so on. Any gift that they might manifest is satanic because they are being used by deceiving spirit, a spirit of religiousness, the unclean spirit. Therefore, dear friends, you must have this understanding. You must have this understanding that instead of, I mean, if you are that person who doesn't speak in tongues, I would even say paradoxically, praise God that you don't speak in tongues yet. Because perhaps you are not even born of God yet, but you want to speak in tongues. And you are speaking in tongues, but these tongues are not from God. They are from the devil. That's it. But how can I know whether or not I have the Holy Spirit? Firstly, is the fruit, your character. Evaluate your spiritual life. Evaluate your conduct. Are you righteous, a person of integrity? Do you want the best for your neighbor? Do you want the best for your neighbor? This is one of the greatest signs that you are of God. Why? Because those who want the best for their neighbor is because they love their neighbor. And if they love their neighbor, indeed, it's because they first love God. Because no one can love their neighbor without first loving God above all things. You see how everything goes together. Everything works together. But people, unfortunately, do not want it. People want to show, they want to speak in tongues as though they were putting on a new dress, a new clothing, and, and so on. You know how it is. Dear friends, the Apostle Paul speaks to the church, the church of Corinth. He said the following to them. Now, concerning spiritual gifts, brethren, I do not want you, he was talking to the brethren, I do not want you to be ignorant. I do not want you to be ignorant. The manifestation of the Spirit or of the spiritual gifts, prophecy, divine healing, miracles, signs, the strange tongues. But the manifestation of the Spirit is something natural. It's given to each one for the profit of all, he says here. The Holy Spirit speaks through him. For to one is given the word of wisdom through the Spirit, for example. So sometimes we have a word of wisdom to give, not because I'm wise, no way, but given the circumstances, for example, there are people whom God chose and are participating now in this transmission, live transmission. So these people whom God chose, God has a word for them, a word of wisdom. So he uses me, or he uses anybody else, who is his child, of course. So they have the word of wisdom to give, but not because, oh, I'm a wise man, I'm going to show off, you know, manifesting my wisdom to men. No, that's not how it works. The gift is from God. Wisdom is from God. 
and he gives given the necessity to another the word of knowledge through the same spirit and to another faith by the same spirit to another gifts of healings to another the working of miracles to another prophecy to another discerning of spirit different kinds of tongues different kinds of tongues to another the interpretation of tongues i never ever had this experience of having the strange tongues interpreted i never interpreted and i've never seen anybody interpreting the tongues never in my entire life as a christian it's been over 60 years so he says here but one the same spirit but one and the same spirit it's not various spirits it's one and the same spirit that is the holy spirit works all these things distributing to each one individually as he wills not as we choose and want no I apologize sometimes I I get as soon as as I start thinking of people who want to manifest this and that in in the churches in order to show off that they are spiritual no those who are spiritual never try to show to others that they are spiritual simply they are spiritual they have the character of god and they are who they are transparent sincere honest truthful that's it that's all this is the image of god here on earth his character it's the fruit or the fruits it, it, he only says here the word fruit and then he speaks of different fruits but it's not what it is it's just one fruit indeed it's god himself it's the holy spirit himself who is manifested in the lives of his children according to the circumstances and the need if he wants to reach out to somebody with a word of wisdom then he's going to use that person to give them a word of wisdom even if that person is illiterate for example if they want to use someone with a word of knowledge he's going to use that person to give knowledge to somebody else but it's the holy spirit that does that he's the one who chooses the moment the person that he's going to talk to and also the servant the child did you understand it's not something the the gifts the gifts of god is not for me to be showing off or stating oh i have this gift and that no we don't have any gift all the spiritual gifts are from god they are from the holy spirit ah oh, my heavenly father but it's interesting that more important he says that more important than speaking in tongues is to prophesy because prophecies prophecies is for men is for people what is the purpose of prophecies he says edification and exhortation and comfort to men so a prophecy is not to guess the future it's not like a horoscope liars no prophecy has the goal of edifying exhorting and comforting so a child of god a child of god 
if they have, if they are used rather with the gift of prophecy, it's not for them to guess anyone's future and say, oh, you must marry so-and-so, and so-and-so -so should marry so-and-so. No, you can travel or you cannot travel. No. This is a deceiving, unclean spirit that does that, and they make these prophecies from hell. So he says like this, he who prophesies speaks edification and exhortation and comfort to men, not for divination and guessing. No, if anyone, dear friends, tells you, oh, God is speaking this and that to me, don't follow this person. This is a lie. It's deceitful. It's a prophet from the devil that is saying this. It's a prophecy from the devil, this prophet. It's being used by the devil because prophecies are for edification, to strengthen people, to exhort, to correct concerning what they are doing wrong, the sin, they are exhorting the person, to comfort in to bring a word of peace, to strengthen, to comfort the person, especially in the moment of, of mourning. It's not prof prophecy is not for, for guessing the future or things of this nature. Now, he who speaks in tongues, do you know what it's for? It's written here. He who is speaking a tongue, which is the strange tongues, edifies himself. He edifies himself. He edifies himself. So when I speak in strange tongues, I am edifying myself. I'm strengthening my faith, my relationship with God. But he who prophesies edifies whom? The church. So when a person prophesies in the church, it's to edify the church, it's to exhort the church, it's to comfort the church. If the person lost a family member, for example, the loss of a member, a pastor, an assistant, so people sometimes get very sad so then comes the prophecy. The prophecy is to comfort that person and not to guess, oh, they are there or they are here. No. Did you understand, dear friends? So understand this. When a person is born of the water and of the Holy Spirit, when they are born of God, they are spiritual, they live in a spiritual kingdom, and they are used by the Holy Spirit, whether to prophesy or to speak in tongues or to heal the sick and so on. So they have the gifts, the gifts that are manifestations of the Holy Spirit and not of the person of the instrument. No, the person is used by the Holy Spirit to, according to the necessity, then they help the situation, help people. However, pay attention. When a person is born of the water and the Holy Spirit and they are spiritual, then naturally, by default, by default, they have the fruit, the character of God. They have the character of God. Did you know that? You can be the poorest person in the world. You can be extremely poor, miserably poor. 
but if you are born of the water and of the Holy Spirit, you become the richest person on the face of the earth because you become a citizen of the kingdom of heaven, no longer a citizen from this world. Their homeland is heaven. Our homeland is heaven, not here on earth. So when a person is born of the water and of the Holy Spirit, they naturally have the fruit of the Spirit, meaning they have the character of God. That's why they are truthful, they don't like lies, they are righteous, they have integrity, that's why they are someone who seeks to live their life based upon the Word of God. So many times they are considered old-fashioned. I don't know if nowadays they still use these words, but at the time they used to say, oh, that person is such an old-fashioned person. Yeah, a person who is born of God becomes old-fashioned in this world because they have nothing to do with this world. I have nothing to do with this world. Absolutely nothing to do with it. I'm a citizen from the kingdom of heaven. I'm here just passing by, waiting, waiting my departure to embrace my citizenship there in heaven. And I believe that you as well, who have been born of the water and of the Holy Spirit, and if you are born of the water and of the Spirit, you naturally bear the fruit of the Spirit. Now, the gifts, as the strange tongues, for example, God is going to use you according to the necessity. But He is the one who uses. It's His gift. And He will use the children. He's not going to use the strangers. He won't use foreigners, intruders, the children of darkness. No way. He will use His children with the gifts that are spiritual. Okay? Tomorrow we will speak more about this. But please, be intelligent. Be wise. Wise. If you still, still do not speak in tongues, it's a good sign for you to evaluate yourself, to examine yourself, and see if indeed you were born of the water and of the Holy Spirit. Because if you were born of the water and of the Spirit, perhaps you don't even speak in tongues. Perhaps you don't even speak in tongues. But the most important thing is the DNA that you carry, which is the fruit of the Holy Spirit, which is the character of God. That's what matters. That's what counts. This character is what will keep you as a citizen of God's kingdom for all eternity. May God bless you all abundantly in the name of the Lord Jesus. Amen.